Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So what I have on the bench this week is my chainsaw. And I recently rebuilt this saw and in the process of taking it all apart and putting it all back together, I found I needed a couple special tools. Now some of those were as simple as just a rope, but other ones were a bit more complex. Let me take the side cover off of this and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so on a chainsaw, uh, the motor spins, I can take this off too, uh, the motor spins uh, the output shaft and there's a clutch on that output shaft and when the, when the RPMs increase, uh, the clutch expands basically and the friction pads rub on this clutch drum and it actually spins the, uh, the chain on the saw itself. That's why if you see a chainsaw idling, the chain isn't spinning, or at least it shouldn't be if the chainsaw is set up to idle properly. Uh, but when you pull the trigger and it revs up, this chain spins. Well, to get this clutch off, uh, or I should say to get the clutch drum off, it's as simple as a small E-clip here. And let me get a tool, we'll pull this off, and I'll show you the actual clutch uh, that I'm talking about under here. Of course, that went flying across the room. Okay, so now we've got the clutch drum off. That's this piece here. And this clutch, you can see a number of springs in here. What happens is when this thing spins fast enough, these weights actually move outward and the outside part of that contacts on the inside of this drum and spins it. Now to service this, I needed to first clean this guy up, um, which I did when I took it apart the first time, but I need to spin this clutch off. Now Echo sells a tool to do this. And this is what that tool looks like. You can see it's essentially just a steel plate with three pins that protrude. And on the other side, it's a bit hard to tell from this picture, but on the other side, it essentially just has a hex surface with wrench flats uh, to be able to turn this guy off. Now, those three pins are just engaging uh, on the open area here between these three weights on the clutch that slide outward. So now you're probably thinking, well, it wouldn't be that hard to design this and then 3D print it out, but these pins are not gonna have any strength. And you're absolutely right, they wouldn't. If we 3D printed this whole thing and we put these pins in here and tried to, and tried to turn this off, th these three pins would just break right off. There'd be no strength there. But sometimes you gotta think outside the box a little bit as to the way to use materials that you have on hand to be able to get a job done. So in this case, you notice this tool is similar to this one and that it has a center hole and it has wrench flats on the back, but there's no pins on this side. That's because the actual pins are just M6 machine screws. And let me get a tool to spin these in. Okay, now hopefully you can see that once we've inserted those M6 machine screws, this tool looks a lot more familiar. And because those M6 bolts go all the way through this and this is printed with a high amount of infill, now instead of that stress being on the layer line um, right there where that pin would start to protrude, we have all the strength of that part, including out here where it's a much larger diameter at the head. So now I think we have to take the bearing off of here as well if memory serves. That's this guy, yep. If we take that bearing off, we'll find that that fits right down over that, fits tightly into that gap. And I designed the outside of this for either a large adjustable wrench or a 38 millimeter socket. So we could just pop this on here and now use that to remove the clutch. Now important to note, if you're actually using this to remove the, the clutch on your saw watching this video, you do, you do need to block the piston as well. And I use just rope for that. You can just take the plug out and just fill up the combustion chamber with rope so that the piston is not able to come up. That'll stop this from spinning and you get your clutch right off. So let's go take a look at the design for this and see if there's anything I missed. 
before we look at the design, there is one other thing I wanted to mention. It's important to have standard hardware like this on hand. I've got a couple different kits like this. This had the, uh, the M, yeah, they're M5. This had the M5 bolts uh, in it that I needed for, for this job. But I use these kits all the time. I have all the different head types. I have metric, standard. I have sets in stainless, and I have washer sets as well. Having to run out to Lowe's or the hardware store every time you need a fastener in a project is a pain in the butt. And these are cheap too. I'll link this one and the other standard ones that I use um, from Amazon uh, down below in the show more. So if you don't have these on hand, definitely check those links out. Okay guys, here's the design for this. And as you can see on one side, we have essentially just a flat face with the hole spacing uh, to line up with the gaps in that clutch. Uh, and the center is just larger than the uh, the outside diameter of that output shaft on the chainsaw to keep things lined up. And you'd have to pull the, the, uh, that bearing off uh, to slip this guy on. Um, on this side, we have recesses for the larger heads of those machine screws. Um, and we have wrench flats or uh, hex on here uh, for uh, using a socket to spin this guy off. And worth noting, uh, I designed this for a 38 millimeter socket and I measured the inside of the socket first they tend to vary a bit, particularly between brands. So if you want a nice, close, tight fit, measure the inside of the actual socket or the wrench that you're planning on using, and then undersize that just a bit so that you have a nice, tight fit. Particularly in plastic, if you're not gripping on these flats, uh, if you're instead putting a lot of pressure on the corners, you're just gonna round them over. The plastic does not have strength uh, on the corner, but it has a fair amount of strength on these flat faces. So this as is will work on an Echo CS310. That's the saw I have. It'll work on a number of other Echo saws as well, but you could employ the same idea for just about uh, any saw um, rather than you know, spending the 15, 20 bucks for the clutch removal tool and then waiting for it to come. So I hope you learned something today. I hope maybe I even earned your, your subscription. Uh, I put out a new video every single Friday. So if you enjoyed this, uh, consider hitting the subscribe button and I'll see you next Friday. Take care guys.